Why don't modern versions of the Bible use the word Calvary? I do have one YouTube commenter who warned me that modern English translations were removing something essential by not using this word Calvary. He said, I'm wondering if you also took the word Calvary out of your hymnals. We didn't, by the way. He raises a good question though. Where did Calvary go? I'm actually taking a little time out from a Christian conference I'm attending to answer this important question, hence the convention center backdrop. But someone has got to answer this question, right? A redheaded someone, preferably. Someone with the relevant nerd certifications. Maybe me. Let's consider the word Calvary. The King James Version uses the word Calvary, of course, though only once. In Luke 23, 33, it reads, and when they were come to the place, which is called Calvary, there they crucified him. The word Calvary has passed into English Christian hymnody and English Christian culture more generally. Many times I have sung the hymn, Burdens Are Lifted at Calvary. In first grade, I attended a school, a Christian school called Calvary Road. For 18 years, I attended a church called Mount Calvary Baptist Church. I met my wife there, in fact. But in all that time, I don't think I ever stopped to ask where exactly the word Calvary came from and what exactly it meant. I thought I knew what it meant, and I wasn't completely wrong. Calvary was just the name of the place where Jesus died. Mount Calvary was the hill on which he was crucified. But if I'd done some simple study, I might have noticed a few things. I might have discovered the reason the word Calvary does not appear in modern translations of the Bible. I might even, with enough effort, have built a time machine, gone into the future, and watched this video, causing an infinite time loop, and then trying desperately to get out of it, accidentally seeing myself, see myself out of time, and then kaboom, I might have ended the world as we know it. Are you at least a little curious about this word, Calvary? I'm going to pause now and test your dedication to finding out the answer to the question that I've raised. Are you sure you want to do this? It is a bit complex. It involves multiple languages, but we'll get through it if we hop on our horses and ride hard like the cavalry, which is a totally different word and not the topic of this video, which is Calvary. Are you still here? Good. Okay. Let's first look up the Greek word that's being translated Calvary here in the King James Version. I'm going to pronounce this word for you, and I'm actually going to mispronounce it on purpose so you can hear what it's related to. It's cranion. Sounds like cranium in Latin, and indeed it's related because Latin and Greek are related. Cranion or cranion just means skull. This word appears precisely four times in the New Testament, once in each of the four Gospels. Guess why? It's because the place where Jesus was crucified was called the place of the skull. And in fact, turning to English now, skull is the word the King James translators used to translate the word cranion three out of the four times it appears. In Matthew, Mark, and John, it uses the word skull to translate this word. In Luke, and only in Luke, did the King James translators choose the word Calvary to translate cranion. Why? Why did the King James Version balk at its own trend, the trend now followed by pretty well all Bible translations in English? Did the King James translators have a time machine? Did they go into the future? Did they see that my church would be called Mount Calvary and therefore choose to use that word in Luke? No, I think I know the reason. I think the King James translators saw a difference between the place of the cranion and what Luke calls the place called cranion. In other words, Luke treated cranion as a proper noun, the name of a place, but still the King James translators could have done what nearly all modern English translations do. They could have translated it as the place called the skull. Why didn't they? The answer lies in past translations. The Bishop's Bible, of which the King James Version is a revision, and the Tyndale New Testament, of which the Bishop's Bible is a revision more or less, they both used Calvary. But I'm not talking about those past translations. I'm actually talking about a translation that came out a full 12 centuries before the King James Version. If there is one ring to rule them all in Bible translation, it's actually not the comparatively young King James Version. It's this translation, which is still used today around the world, including across the street at that church. In fact, as a little aside, uh, I've heard many times that the King James is not archaic by definition because it's used around the world every day. If that's true, then it surely applies to the translation that I am now talking about, which is, of course, the Latin Vulgate. 
The word the Latin Vulgate uses here at Luke 23:33 is calvaria, and the simple meaning of that word in Latin is skull, just the plain old bone that protects your brain, right? The Oxford Latin Dictionary gives this example sentence from a writer named Gellius, who wrote in the second century before Christ, calvaria ke eius ipsum osum expurgarunt in aurarunt ke. Mm. In other words, the veins which are between the skull and the skin. Old English had its own name for this place where Jesus was crucified. They called it headpan stow. Headpan was just the Old English word for a skull. It was a pan or shallow bowl shape in the head. And stow meant place. So headpan stow meant skull place. We still have something like headpan. We'll talk in more medical contexts about the brain pan. And we still have stow in place names, actually. The famous and large British town of Bristol was actually once Bridge Stow, the place at the bridge. By the way, I found that answer through ChatGPT, and that is one of, or maybe the first time that I've gotten genuine value and a good answer that I actually checked out elsewhere from that app. Here's my supposition. I think that the Latin word calvaria came to be a proper name in its own right in English because the Latin Vulgate was the standard Bible translation in Europe and in England. Some of its wording ended up getting transliterated rather than translated. Calvaria thereby became an English word. Actually, I think this probably happened long before Wycliffe translated the Latin Vulgate into English in the late 1300s. But when Wycliffe did do that, he himself used not headpan stow or skull place, but Calvary. Because, I presume, the Latin word had become an English one. And to help you accept and understand my hypothesis, my argument, I'll offer two parallels. One is close to home. It's in our English. Just think about this. Why do we have the word Calvary? because of the King James Version, especially, but also other translations that have established it as an English place name. Mount Calvary, then, doesn't mean Mount Skull any more than Bristol means bridge place, or George means earth worker. We forget the etymologies of our place names. They just become arbitrary syllables. That's what happened to Calvary. I think the word Lucifer, here's my second example, is a near perfect parallel to Calvary. Lucifer was formed from the Latin words for light and bringer or carrier. Lucifer, therefore, came from light bringer. It was the common Latin name for the morning star. Cicero actually spoke of this a hundred years before Christ. He mentioned that, and I quote here, the star of Venus, which is phosphorus in Greek, is called Lucifer in Latin. I'm getting this citation from the Oxford Latin Dictionary, by the way. But what was once a simple name for a star became a proper name for a demon over time, Lucifer. This is, not so incidentally, why modern translations don't use Lucifer anymore. The Hebrew there means morning star. It isn't a proper name like Lucifer, capital L, has become in English. To summarize, Calvary is just the plain old Latin word for skull. The use of that word in the King James Version is basically a holdover from the Latin Vulgate, and I think it obscures the meaning unnecessarily, just a little bit. I wish in this case that the King James translators had been consistent with their choices in the other three Gospels. However, it is not a huge deal, and the decision for how to translate toponyms, place names, can be very difficult. I can see the King James translators saying, well, Calvary has become the name of the place in English. And according to the Oxford English Dictionary, that was true in 1611, as it's still pretty much today. But it's impossible to imagine Calvary becoming the best English word for translating Golgotha or Cranion without the Latin Vulgate intervening. And note that the KJV translators knew this. They put this other translation option in the margin, or the place of the skull. If it's wrong somehow for the contemporary English versions to take out the word Calvary by choosing place of the skull instead, was it wrong for the King James translators to include that option in a footnote? No, obviously it wasn't. On balance, I think it's actually the better choice. What the King James translators did was not wrong, but it shouldn't be obligatory for every other English translation to do the same. And now hopefully thou understandest what thou readest in the King James Version a little better.